So as the seventh graders are coming into the class, they're being introduced to entrepreneurship for the first time. Um, so you can label entrepreneurship as creativity, um, whatever the buzzword that's in your curriculum that needs to be emphasized. Um, but a lot of the students are getting together for the first time themselves. And I teach in a bilingual school, so a lot of them come from different cultures. So I tell them, you know, no matter how simple the definition of entrepreneurship may be, just somebody creating a company or, or you know, there's still many different perceptions of what an entrepreneur is, or there's many different perceptions of um, how to go through that process. So as they're getting into the class for the first time, I like to run an exercise with them and it's about perception. And I saw this on one of the YouTube's I'll put in the links below, but I had the students um, close their eyes. So they get a piece of paper, blank piece of paper. They close their eyes. Um, and I tell them they can't ask me any questions. They just have to follow to the directions as the best that they understand. So they close their eyes and I tell them to fold the paper uh, long ways. And as they close, I told them to, I say, okay, fold it again. Some fold it uh, up down, some fold it. Yes, so, so they fold it. I say, all right, fold it one more time. So someone but I would do it that way. And I say, all right, well, rip a corner from one side. So they rip a corner. I said, unfold it once and fold it again. And rip two corners. Rip two corners. And you can have them go through as many times as unfolding and stuff, but then eventually you say, okay, open your eyes and hold up your paper. Everybody holds up a different snowflake. Same, same instructions. They just all perceived it differently. So the outcome will look different. Um, so you try to create this interaction with, um, with yourself, with the students, and then amongst themselves. Um, so if they come from different cultures, they have to um, really dive into knowing somebody. It's not just a one minute introduction for the students. They really got to get up and explain themselves. Um, so with this idea of scaffolding that we'll talk about, um, and I've posted more information about in the links below, um, the ideas of scaffolding are really allowing the students to, um, within their zone of comfortability, within their zone of proximity and their learning abilities, um, they're able to, um, they're able to grow and be creative in a, in a safe, um, a safe environment for themselves. So there's no exam or there's no homework. So the deadlines and the objectives, the objectives that they, they set for themselves um, is completely organic within their groups and um, within themselves. So they push themselves and it's when you, you give them an idea, you say, um, you're, you're gonna come up with an idea to solve a problem in society. Um, they don't see the risks that older people do and they don't see the limitations. So with that, it's why would we why would we try to why would we try to cage that in? Um, so instead of putting parameters on them that they need to meet, they put parameters on themselves um, that they're able to gauge. So engage goes into the next word of engagement. And engagement is absolutely critical uh, with the students. So as much as I need to get up and I need to tell them about the basics of marketing or products and services and pricing and promotion, um, they also need to be in their groups a lot. And you need to make, sh make sure that they're off of the games and off of the internet, but, but they're working together. And you know, sometimes they're teenagers, sometimes they have bad days, and sometimes they're having great days. Um, but, and you only get so much time with them. So you're like, well, right, you guys might be feeling down today or not so creative, but is there another aspect of the business? If you don't want to really work on the pricing, what about just drawing a logo for the day? Um, so the scaffolding idea really makes it flexible for the teacher to change the daily curriculum for how the group and the individual students are working that day. So that's some of the ideas that researchers from the University of Uvasco are talking about. Um, Alyssa Tarvin, and if you watched the previous um, videos from the other video, she, she's talking about 
students need to be flexible, but so does the, the policies and the education around things. Um, but the student then, you know, does need to be a little courageous, needs to be able to stand up in front of the class and um, verbalize what their, their business idea is. And if English isn't your native language, that can be very difficult. But, but they also know at the end of the day that there's a real life objective of going to a, a real life international sponsored pitching competition and they can talk about their company. So, so they, they see the fear, they see the objective, but they know they're going to have to face that. Uh, so I think that's really appreciated within the, the education system here in Finland. Um, so now that you've talked about some, some of the different things with the students about perception and uh, telling them, you know, that you're going to be teaching their course based on scaffolding so that you expect this kind of behavior out of them um, within their groups particularly. Um, if, if you do decide to have an exam or homework uh, because you, your curriculum demands it, um, I would just try to remind you that when teaching entrepreneurship, you're not, um, you're not, test, you're not teaching knowledge so much, you're teaching a process. So don't have an exam that tests the student's knowledge of entrepreneurship, um, but try to have an exam that tests their, their ability to apply some of that knowledge within a process. So now that you've made it through the dry theory of so why do we build curriculum the, the way we do here in Finland and where do we get some of the ideas from um, and what are the ages and uh, the students that we're teaching to. So now we can actually talk about um, some of the fun ways of actually doing it. So now you need to grab a uh, pen and paper and I'm going to get through some specific notes of of what we're doing um, to build that environment, to, to build that experience that we talked about earlier. Uh, so with the seventh graders and the younger students, um, we, still have to, we still have to be there a lot of the time to help them build complex thoughts. Um, but with the internet nowadays, they can, they can access global knowledge like that. So for a teacher to stand there and be like, well, this is how you do something um, well, online they can see how you can do it three different ways now. Um, so just as a teacher, you're just there to, to foster an environment for an hour or so that they can get with their group members and um, discuss um, some organic ideas that they create themselves. So in the seventh grade class, what, what I've seen works really well is the scaffolding idea. So the scaffolding teaching process. Um, so you're there to assist the student um, as their their cognitive ability and their zone of proximity um, and their zone of um, proximity grows over time and as their ideas um, flourish um, as their groups flourish um, then myself I, I transform more of a teacher into just a, as a coach so now that we've got through the dry theories of why and how curriculum is developed here in Finland to teach entrepreneurship we can actually talk about some of the, um, the practices and the principles that we try to foster that environment, um, that experience that we, the children go through. Um, so as I mentioned in the first video, um, the idea of scaffolding really comes into play with the seventh graders. As they, as they grow older into the ninth grade and into high school, they create communities of practices. So there are two different ideas um, from two different um, educational researchers, um, but in the seventh grade, it's, it's scaffolding. So what is scaffolding? Um, it's, it's a method in which we can enable uh, the students to, to f construct complex ideas um, over time. Um, and then over time, we, we can gradually remove some of that assistance. And for example, teaching entrepreneurship you go from a teacher into more of a coach. Um, and then by the time they're in ninth grade in high school, um, that scaffolding is completely away and they're in communities of practice. So, you know, they, they go to class on their own. And as a teacher, you're just there to maybe email some people in the outside world to set up meetings for them. Um, but in the seventh grade, you, you still need to, to be there a lot of the time introducing business concepts and um, marketing concepts and things like that. So there's this, there's this cycle 
um, this life cycle process that the groups go through and and then their mindsets when when learning about entrepreneurship and then how to actually implement their their understanding of entrepreneurship into products and services. So in the seventh grade, we really um, we introduce what is entrepreneurship and the definition that I always present to the students is uh, an entrepreneur is somebody that looks out into society, um, sees some chaos and some craziness out there, um, but within all that craziness, there's there's a, a way, a method that they can do something to improve upon that chaos to maybe make it a little less crazy or um, to help people get through the craziness that they recognize. Um, so it could be students creating an online um, portal where other students can talk to each other about issues or it could be a brick made out of um, material in a disaster area for an eco house. So their ideas are great. When you give the opportunity for a teenager to um, to create something, they have no concept of risk. So you, you put them in this environment um, that you create around the idea of scaffolding and you introduce business ideas to them um, and then you just you just let them go wild. And over the year or the workshop um, that you're running with the students, um, you can see that that process of, of exploration into them creating concrete concepts themselves um, and then hopefully being an active learner within that within that environment and acquiring the knowledge that uh, a lot of the time that they're getting from their peers and from other people within the school because they can always go online anytime and find any knowledge so so it's it's better for them to um, to focus on the knowledge that they're creating themselves. Uh, and then that goes back to the organic education system that um, Posse Salberg from Finland here is talking about. Um, so next we'll get into part three and that's entrepreneurship for the older students. And there's some different ideas um, that we face as teachers as we pull that scaffolding away. Um, but if you want to refresh your mind of you know, what exactly is scaffolding, I've put some really good links that, uh, that I like in the description below. Um, so take a look at those. Thank you. Um, if you have any uh, questions or comments um, about scaffolding or about any other aspects about teaching here in Finland, um, please, feel, uh, please feel free to get in contact with me. Um, if your classroom and teaching situation is different and scaffolding is not the way to go, um, I'd love to hear about that. And if you're in a country where there's alumni from the University of Uvasco, um, I'd love to get you guys in touch and maybe you guys can mold something for that specific area and we can all talk about it. So this is just one perspective of how to teach entrepreneurship. Um, even though you're just teaching the very basics of entrepreneurship, you're more teaching a, a way of doing things in, within the classroom. And you're, you're more focused on building a, an environment than actually having them build companies. That's just kind of like a side thing that they end up producing. But they end up going through this process, which is the main thing. Um, and that's kind of what the Finnish education system likes like to see more than the true false type of exams at the end um, so thank you and if you have any questions please feel free to get in, in contact with me thank you